Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Funko Pop Central. Today, we're going to be counting down the 10 rarest Funko Pops of all time. I don't have any of these in my personal collection because the uh, the number 10 is still well over $3,000, or I think actually right at $3,000. So these pops are super expensive. The first eight are Freddy Funkos. If you don't know what Freddy Funko is, uh, this is him right here. He's basically the mascot of Funko, and he's just this little redhead kid with um, a crown on his head usually. And what they'll do for uh, San Diego Comic-Con Fun Days, which is just this huge thing. It's super hard to get into. Basically, the average collector will never get to go to Fun Days. So, uh, what they do is they'll take Freddy Funko, and they'll take a character, like, let's say, Batman, and they'll morph him together into one pop, and it'll look really cool, and they do it for a bunch of different characters every year, and usually they're super limited, super hard to get, and that's why they're so expensive. So, the first eight on this list are Freddy Funkos, and then the last two are regular pops, just regular characters, nothing to do with Freddy Funko, so that's actually pretty cool that the top two are not Freddy Funkos, but I always watch these videos, and they always exclude Freddy Funko, and I feel like we don't have a solid list of pops with Freddy Funko in it, the top 10, so that's what we're doing today, I hope you enjoy it, leave a like if you did, because this video actually took a lot of research, and uh, yeah, I put a lot of time into this video, so I hope you enjoy it, subscribe if you're new, and let's get into the video. So guys, basically how I got these numbers and these uh, estimates and everything is actually a pop price guide. And I use pop price guide because if you guys know, I like Stashpedia better if I'm being completely honest. But Stashpedia is just a little too new. They don't have all the data that pop uh, price guide has because pop price guide has been around for a long, long time. So uh, Stashpedia just basically for all these pops, Stashpedia has a, a zero dollar value on these pops. So it's almost impossible to get their value from Stashpedia. So I had to use pop price guide just because they have so many more entries of these rare pops just because they've been around for so long. So that's why we're using pop price guide today. So uh, that's where I got most of this information. But there's not really like a set database where it shows you uh, the 10 rare or the 10 most expensive pops in order. Like there's just no list. It just doesn't do that so basically what you have to do is add every single pop to your uh, collection or want list and then sort them by um value in the spreadsheet so it does take a lot of work uh, i spent about four hours doing that uh, on pop price guide so it wasn't easy but let's get into number 10 so guys at number 10 we have giant toy fair freddy funko also i'm gonna throw a picture up there somewhere so you guys can look at it while i'm talking about it uh so this thing was exclusive to toy fair in 2013 and they only made 12 of these so that's why it's so rare because only 12 of them in the world plus if there's a few that got lost or something like that then there's even less of them so this thing comes in at three thousand thousand dollars guys and this is the least expensive on this list so guys coming in at number nine we have glow in the dark buzz light your freddy funko so this is kind of what i was talking about at the beginning of the video they mashed two characters together and it's really cool this one happens to be buzz Lightyear, and it's glow in the dark which is super cool uh this was uh exclusive to san diego comic con 2011 and it, this one was also limited to 12 pieces so a lot of these super rare freddy funkos that you'll notice is either 24 or 12 pieces um, so that's kind of why they are so rare because if someone wants it There's really not that big of an opportunity to get it because there's so few of them in the world So that's why these uh, super rich collectors will pay a lot of money for them But anyways guys this one comes in at three thousand and fifty dollars So only a fifty dollar jump from the last spot, but it starts to grow exponentially in a second here And uh, yeah, this one's really cool though three thousand fifty dollars so guys, coming in at number 8, we have Freddy Funko as Boba Fett. So this is a super, super cool one. I love Star Wars, and a ton of other people love Star Wars, and that's one of the reasons that this one is so rare. Uh, they only made 24 pieces of this pop, so a little more than the other ones, but still valued a little higher. And uh, this was exclusive to San Diego Comic-Con 2014. And dude, uh, that's my favorite Comic-Con of all time. I got my uh, my Lunchbox Spongebob pop over there from that year. Uh, just so many cool pops were released that year. I think it was the best San Diego Comic-Con for Funko ever to this day. I think it was way better than 15, 16, 17. So, and I think it's going to be better than 18. So, that's just a legendary San Diego Comic-Con. And this one comes in at $3,120. So, again, not a huge jump from the last one, but still a ton of money to be dropping on a three inch Funko Pop. So super, super cool one and super, super expensive one. At number seven, we have Glow in the Dark Frankenberry Freddy Funko. This thing was released at San Diego Comic Con 2011 and they only made 12 of these ones too. So we were at 24 and now we're back down to 12 and this one comes in at 3,200. 
in ten dollars guys super super expensive also it's pretty cool and uh, a little bit of significance about this one is they throw that chase sticker on there because i believe that they made 24 of these pops and then they made 12 of them as chases and glow in the dark and 12 of them just regular so i believe that's why they throw the chase sticker on there or i don't know if they just do it just because it glows in the dark not really sure how they did it back then but it's still a really cool one. At number six, we have Metallic Ghost Rider Freddy Funko. This one is amazing. I love this pop. This one is definitely my favorite on the list so far. Uh, it's just super, super cool. And this was released at San Diego Comic-Con 2013 with that nice blue sticker. I love that sticker. Um, and they made 12 of these as well. And this one comes in at $3,390. So we're getting up there a little bit. Not too high, though. It's still increasing just a little bit at a time. Um, but this is a super awesome one. And I love the metallic on it. I love the Freddy Funko and Ghost Rider together. I think it looks super cool. And I believe they made a different version of this Ghost Rider as well. I think it's a little higher on the list. So we'll get there in a second. But this is an awesome one. So we have another Frankenberry at number five. This one is a metallic Frankenberry that they also released at San Diego Comic Con 2011. They made 12 of these, and this one is worth $3,430. So this one is a crazy expensive pop. And I think I actually like this one a little bit better than the uh, Glow in the Dark one, just because, I don't know, I, I think it just looks a little bit cooler. It kind of almost looks like when the jellyfish take over SpongeBob's body and SpongeBob. I don't know why I said that. They kind of all look like that, to be honest, but I really do like this one. I think it's a really cool metallic, and uh, yeah, that one comes in at number five so we are pushing ghost rider aside for this number four pop this one is so so cool it is a metallic tony stark freddy funko so this one is super super rare it was limited to 12 pieces in san diego comic con 2012 so was that like six years ago which is insane to think about uh, i wish i was collecting back then so i could try and get some of these pops for like 100 bucks because i bet it was at one point i bet it wasn't that expensive because pops weren't that big yet so this one comes in at $3,500, guys. Insane. That's like a mortgage payment for a super, super nice house. So uh, this one is super cool. I like this one way better than the Ghost Rider. Uh, it has a nice metallic on it, and it almost looks like it uh, could just be Tony Stark, but it's Freddy Funko, too. you got to give him some credit. So that one comes in at number four. At number three, we have the last Freddy Funko on the list, and then we move into just regularly licensed pops. So that's really awesome. So, at number three, this pop came out in 2011 at San Diego Comic-Con, and it is the Metallic Count Chocula. So, they did this with all the serial ad icons, if I'm not mistaken. Count Chocula, Boo Berry, and Frankenberry. So, they made a Metallic one and a Glow in the Dark one and released them at 2011 San Diego Comic-Con. So, I guess that's pretty cool, but we don't really see Boo Berry on this list. So, I don't know if people just don't like him as much or what happened there. Or maybe he just hasn't gotten sold yet, and he could be worth more than all of these. Anyways, guys, this one comes in at 3000 $550, which is crazy. Uh, these last two pops jump it up a little high, and then the last one just jumps up way high to... I won't spoil it yet, but uh, super cool in here. I love the metallic on this one. The brown metallic looks really, really cool. But anyways, that is number three. So at number two, we have Clown Dumbo. And this is my favorite pop on this entire list because it's just a regularly licensed Disney pop. There's no uh, Freddy Funko attached to it. It wasn't made by Strictly Funko. You know, they worked with Disney on this one. So it's super cool. It came out San Diego Comic-Con 2013. And this is actually the largest edition size on this entire list with 48 of these pops printed. So not not a bad print size for being so expensive like you would think that the more pops they made of this certain one that it would be less expensive but that's not the case with this pop I mean still 48 is a super small number so that's why it's so expensive but at the same time if they would have made 12 of them I wonder how expensive this guy would be anyways this pop is four thousand two hundred and ten dollars which is insane this pop actually went up like two thousand dollars recently over the past few months i've been watching this one and it went from like two thousand all the way up to four thousand because i think someone sold it for like six thousand i think the sale was for so that's insane but obviously it's not worth six thousand because that's only one sale anyways guys let's move on to number one at number one we have the glow in the dark chase clockwork orange funko pop this thing is insane. I couldn't find the year it was actually made. So if you guys know, uh, Max is trying to eat Freddy Funko there. But if you guys know the year it came out, uh, let me know in the comments down below because I couldn't find it. I, I researched a lot. I read a lot of articles and I just, for some reason, couldn't find the year it came out. Uh, I don't know if no one knows or just people that work at Funko. I have no idea. Leave it in the comments if you know. But they only made 12 of these chases and it comes in at $13,300. So basically, if I sold my entire collection, every single pop, every, for, for the value it's worth, 
uh, I would have that pop and about $500 to spare. So that kind of puts it in perspective a little bit. And it's not like my collection doesn't have rare pops. And I have super rare pops. I have $200, $300 pops. So that's pretty crazy to think about. Uh, so yeah. The story behind this pop is the old CEO of Funko, the first one before he sold it. If you watch the Making Fun movie, you know who I'm talking about. He's the chief of fun. Um, but yeah, so he made 24 of these pops, I believe. 12 chases and 12 just regular. And by the way, the regular is worth like $2,000 still, which is crazy. But so what happened is he signed uh, the original 12 and then the... Uh, the 12 chases were just by themselves. They didn't get a signature, I don't believe. Um, and what happened was they actually like lost the license for the pop so that they weren't allowed to ship them to stores or anything. So uh, they, he basically just gave them to friends and family. And then I guess the only way to get them is if his friends and family sold them, which is kind of like, why would you sell it? But if you don't really know uh, if it's worth anything, you could just sell it for like 100 bucks to your friend or something. And uh, then that's how the rarity begins because... You really can't find this pop. Like, if you see a listing for this pop, that's super rare because it's either fake or the person has been collecting a long time and somehow got their hands on this box. So, also, another thing about it, it's been around for so long. I believe this is one of the first pops ever made. Um, there's going to be some damaged boxes out there. Like, uh, the old CEO, let's say he gives it to his son because he doesn't think it's ever going to be worth anything. And his son tears the box apart, ruins the figure. It's like, okay, there's one down. Now there's 11. And now there's 10, 9, 8. So there's probably not many of these things left, which is why it is so rare. That's pretty much going to do it for the video, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Let me know down below if you could have any of these 10 pops, which one would you choose? And also let me know if you guys enjoyed these types of videos. Uh, I can make more of them. Just let me know topics down below. I really enjoyed making it. I like doing research and stuff like that. So it was pretty fun to make this video. I just hope you guys enjoyed it. Anyways, I'll see you next time.